I'm uh, Yasser Kugler and I, I'm at the Claremont Graduate University and we teach graduate students. The theme of my talk is uh, the stability of deterrence and its interaction with uh, disarmament. Well, the major points uh, I make are several. The first one is uh, mutual assured destruction is not stable as people anticipate. Uh, the second par uh, point is that deterrence and proliferation are compatible. They are not alternate alternatives, but they are uh, policies that could be put together. The third one is that uh, the stability of the international system could dramatically be enhanced by a monopoly of weapons in the hands of uh, an international uh, entity or in the hands of major powers. This is interesting because by 275 approximately China and the United States are going to be both conventionally and nuclearly at parity, which are the conditions that we anticipate could lead to a confrontation provided the two states are still dissatisfied. Deterrence and proliferation are compatible uh, in the traditional sense because as you increase the number of nations with nuclear capabilities, you decrease the likelihood that those countries would actually uh, uh, choose war to settle their disputes. Our argument is exactly the opposite. Uh, the possession of nuclear weapons increase the likelihood of war. We believe that's the case. Having nuclear weapons is a trigger for other countries which, with equal capabilities to use them. If the major nuclear powers hold capabilities uh, to protect the non-nuclear powers uh, and assure them that in the case of a first use by any of them, except the major powers themselves, uh, uh, it will be uh, responded in force that should intimidate dramatically any small power, be it Iran and Israel or Israel and Iran, from doing so because the U.S. would protect Israel and uh, Russia and China might protect uh, Iran. Uh, this proposal does not address uh, the problem of nuclear non-state actors, uh, which cannot be deterred simply because they are not exposed to retaliation.